Everywhere you look online, you'll see that the Kangol has the strongest bite force in the world, 743 PSI. And just below that, the Cane Corso comes in at 700 PSI. It's one of the most repeated dog statistics on the internet. You see it in listicles, TikToks, comment sections, even arguments between dog owners trying to prove whose breed reigns supreme. But here's the problem, no one can actually prove it. In today's video, we're going to break down exactly where the 743 PSI numbers come from, how it exploded online, and why it's still being repeated more than a decade later. We're also going to show you what real world testing looks like, including our own bite force data from Cane Corsos, Rottweilers, Presa Canarios, and Bandogs, to see how close any of these breeds can get to those mythical numbers. So if you've ever seen someone quote that 743 PSI figure and wondered, is that actually true? Stick around. This one is going to clear up a lot of misinformation. Before we get too deep into the numbers, let's actually talk about what PSI even means, because this is where a lot of confusion starts. Now PSI stands for pounds per square inch, and it measures pressure, not pure strength. Think of it this way, it's the amount of force being pushed down on a very specific area. The smaller that area is, the higher the PSI reading becomes, even if the dog's overall bite force hasn't changed. So let's say that two dogs bite with the exact same power. If one bites down on a small, narrow object and the other bites something thicker, the first dog will appear to have a higher PSI simply because its teeth are pressing that force into a smaller space. That's why online PSI comparisons are so unreliable. The reading depends on what the dog bites, how it bites, and what equipment is used to measure it. Some tests use metal plates, others use rubber pads, some even use custom built sleeves like the one we use on this channel, and each gives a different result. A 2018 veterinary review actually looked at this in detail and found that bite strength can change dramatically depending on things like head size, skull shape, muscle mass, and even motivation. In other words, there isn't a fixed PSI number that defines a breed forever. There's just too much variation from one individual dog and one testing setup to another. In simple terms, a dog biting a hard flat plate with its back molars might score far higher than the same dog biting a thick padded sleeve near its front teeth. The power's the same, but the pressure isn't. And once you understand that, it's easy to see how the internet can take one number from one unverified test and run wild with it. So now that we know what PSI actually means, where did that very specific number, 743 PSI, even come from? If you type Kangol Bite Force into Google, you'll instantly get flooded with websites, listicles and social posts, all saying the same thing. The Kangol has a bite force of 743 PSI. Some of them even list 734 or 740. It changes slightly depending on which site you're on, but the point is they all look very confident. Here's the problem, none of them have proven this. And when you dig a little deeper, every single one of those articles links back to nothing. There's no scientific paper, no lab tests, no recorded data, no mention of a device or even a specific dog that was supposedly measured. It's just the same sentence copied and pasted over and over again. In fact, even a few of the more reputable dog websites openly admit they don't actually know where the number came from. One of them literally says the true source of the 743 PSI claim is difficult to pinpoint and it's probably overestimated. But by the time anyone reads that disclaimer, the bold headline, Kangol 743 PSI, has already done its job. And that's how this myth is spread. Sometime years ago, someone, maybe a blogger, maybe a content creator, posted a list titled something like Top 10 Dogs with the Strongest Bite Force. They probably grabbed a few numbers from older sources, rounded them up and filled in the blanks with guesses. Then other websites copied it. Then those got scrapped by pet blogs, Facebook pages and clickbait TikToks until the 743 PSI figure became internet gospel. And let's be honest, it makes sense why it caught on. 
The Kangal is this massive, imposing livestock guardian dog from Turkey, bred for centuries to fend off wolves and bears. So when you attach a big, impressive number to that image, it fits the story perfectly. A mythical super guardian with a bite force stronger than any dog on earth. The problem is, there's no real test anyone can point to that actually measured a Kangal at 743 PSI. It's just a number that sounds believable because it's oddly specific and gets repeated enough that people stop questioning it. And as you'll see later, this isn't just a Kangal thing. The Canic Corso has its own version of the same myth. But before we get there, let's talk about where people are actually seeing these claims the most. Not in research papers or studies, but right in the comment sections of social media. If you've ever spent time in a dog-related comment section online, you, you know exactly where this goes. Someone posts a clip of a working dog or a bike test video, and within seconds, the comments fill up with people shouting numbers, yeah, the Kangol's 743 PSI, no contest. Or my Canic Corso, 700 PSI would crush that dog. You see it on YouTube, Reddit, Facebook groups, it's everywhere. And honestly, it's easy to understand why. Dog owners love their dogs, we all do. And there's nothing wrong with a bit of pride when you've got a powerful breed. Of course you want to show it off. It's completely natural. But here's the problem. Once someone sees a bold statistic like 743 PSI in one comment, it sticks. Then the next person repeats it. And before long, it becomes this accepted fact that nobody even bothers to question. And suddenly, if you don't quote a PSI number, people assume that you don't know what you're talking about. The irony is that most of these numbers come from those same recycled listicles we talked about earlier, not from any actual bite force test or scientific measurement. There's no method mentioned, no device, no calibration, no proof, just confidence. And again, this isn't about calling people out. It's about recognizing how easy it is for misinformation to grow in a space built on passion. Because everyone wants their breed to be the strongest, the smartest, and the most capable. That pride fuels the myth. But without real data to back it up, it just keeps the misinformation alive. So when you see a comment that proudly declares, my dog bites at 743 PSI, remember that that number didn't come from a lab, it came from a thread, and that's a big difference. So let's talk about what's actually been measured when it comes to canine bite force, because there are only a handful of tests that ever made it into mainstream media. The most well-known comes from National Geographic's Dangerous Encounters with Dr. Brady Barr. You've probably seen it. He uses a padded bite sleeve wired to a pressure gauge to test the bite of three breeds, a Rottweiler, a German Shepherd, and a Pitbull. In that test, the Rottweiler supposedly recorded the highest bite, around 328 PSI, while the others came in a little lower. And ever since, that clip has been shared online as proof of different breeds' PSI numbers. But here's where I personally start to lose confidence in the data. The results are presented in PSI, but Nat Geo never actually showed how those PSI readings were calculated. And that's a crucial piece of information because to calculate PSI accurately, you need to know the total surface area of the dog's teeth making contact with the device at the exact moment of peak pressure. Without the surface area measurement, you can't determine the true PSI. You can only estimate raw force. On top of that, we don't know if the dog's bit with their front teeth, their molars, or how deep the padding compressed. All of those change the pressure reading massively. So while the test was entertaining and groundbreaking for its time, it lacks the transparency that would make it scientifically credible. And even if it were perfect, it was still one setup, three dogs, one device, and no kangles. Yet the internet constantly points to that same Nat Geo segment as if it somehow validated the 743 PSI myth, when in reality, the kangle wasn't even part of the experiment. So as fascinating as that test was to watch, it doesn't give us the kind of verified, repeatable data you'd need to make accurate breed comparisons. And that brings us to the scientific side, what actual research says about how bite force should be measured and why no serious study ever pins down a single PSI number from a specific breed. If you dig into the scientific literature, researchers like Ellis, Kim and others don't really talk about bite force as a single magic number tied to a breed. What they show over and over is that bite force is governed by anatomy and physics, skull width, jaw lever, geometry, muscle cross-section, tooth placement, and even the angle that the animal bites at. 
Those factors are absolutely important and they explain why some dogs can generate huge forces. But here's the thing, science gives us explanatory power, not always practical performance. Lab laboratory setups and models are brilliant for understanding how anatomy influences force. They'll tell you a dog can generate X or Y based on school shape. They're the biomechanical blueprints. On the other side of the fence is performance, how a dog actually behaves in the real world. And that's where our testing comes in. The way we set the sleeve up isn't designed to force a particular bite angle or to manufacture peak readings. It's set so the dog approaches and attacks how it wants to. We let the dog choose the contact point, the teeth it uses, and the style of the clamp. And that tells us something labs don't always capture. What the dog will naturally do under real conditions. Think about it like sprinting. If you want to know who's the fastest man on the planet, you can study bone density and muscle fiber types in a lab. Those things are real and meaningful. But you don't crown the world's fastest man based on muscle biopsies. You watch the Olympic 100 meter final and see who actually wins when everything's on the line. For bite force, I'm interested in performance. What happens when the dog decides to bite the sleeve in a natural, motivated way? That's the metric that my viewers care about. And that doesn't mean that lab work is useless. Far from it. The anatomical studies give us context, explain why differences exist and let us predict ranges. But when it comes to real world application, protection work, livestock guarding, or an adrenaline charged defensive buy, a dog's actual behavior and how it applies force in the moment matters a huge amount. So when you see a headline screaming a fixed PSI for a breed, remember the science gives you causes and ranges while real world testing gives you the outcome that actually matters to handlers and owners. Both are valuable, but they answer different questions. With that in mind, let's look at how those big internet numbers hold up against our own on the ground tests, starting with the Cane Corso. So if you Google strongest dog buy, the Corso almost always sits right underneath the Kangal, usually listed at around 700 PSI. It sounds believable, massive head, strong jaw, Muscular frame, you know, it fits the image perfectly. But just like the Kangal myth, there's no verifiable study or peer-reviewed data that confirms that figure. Nobody has ever published a proper experiment showing a Corso producing 700 PSI in a controlled, documented setting. It's another number that's been copied from post to post until it became accepted as the truth. Now on our channel, we've actually tested multiple Cane Corsos and we use the exact same bite meter setup with the same calibration and the same testing protocol every single time. The idea is to keep conditions consistent across breeds so the comparisons are fair. And what we found is really interesting. Corsos absolutely bite hard. There's no question about that. They're driven, powerful and committed. But when we line those readings up next to the results from big working breeds like Rottweilers, Presser Canarios or Bandogs, the, the difference isn't nearly as dramatic as the internet makes it seem. You'll always see natural variation. Things like the dog's size, drive, training level, fatigue and even its target angle play a part. But the gap isn't 700 versus 300. It's far closer and much more situational. And that's really the point. We're not saying canny corsos are weak. Far from it. They're incredible animals with serious capability. What we're saying is that the numbers floating around online, 700 PSI, 743 PSI, just don't hold up under consistent real world testing. Our data shows a much more modest and realistic spread. Still impressive, but believable. And that's far more valuable than a myth because it gives owners and handlers a better understanding of what these dogs actually deliver in performance not just internet legend. So why do these big bite force numbers refuse to die? It's simple, they're catchy, they sound impressive, and they fit a narrative. And they give people something to brag about. Strongest dog in the world, 743 PSI, it's headline gold. These numbers feed into what I call the guardian dog mythology. The idea that certain breeds are almost supernaturally powerful. The Kangal guarding flocks from wolves, the Corso standing as an unbreakable protector. It's a story people want to believe, and it spreads fast. 
The problem is that myths like this can start shaping how people think about dogs and even how they handle them. If someone genuinely believes that their Kangal has 743 PSI every time it bites, they might start to underestimate the importance of training, soci socialization and responsible ownership because they assume the dog's raw power alone makes it safe or effective. On the flip side, sensational numbers can also fuel fear and stigma. People read 743 PSI and instantly imagine an uncontrollable monster, when in reality, the Kangal is a calm, intelligent livestock guardian that really acts aggressively without cause. My goal with this series isn't to strip away the pride owners have for their dogs. It's to replace myths with real measurable respect. These dogs don't need inflated numbers to be impressive because they already are. So after all this, what is the truth? The truth is there's no real evidence that a Kangal has ever been measured at 743 PSI. That number started online, it spread through listicles and comment sections, and it became one of the biggest dog myths on the internet. But here's what is real. These are incredible dogs. They're powerful, intelligent, capable, and they don't need inflated stats to prove it. Whether it's a Kangal, a Corso, a Rottweiler, or a Bandog, every dog that we test earns respect through performance, not through unverified numbers. My goal with videos like this isn't to tear down the legend, it's to show the truth in a way that's honest, measurable, and fair. Because when we deal in facts, we actually give these breeds the credit that they deserve. So next time you see someone drop that 743 PSI comment, you'll know the real story and you can point them to this video. If you've enjoyed this deep dive and want to see more real world bite force tests, hit that like button, subscribe and drop a comment below. Tell me what breed you want to see tested next or if you think that your dog has got what it takes to make it onto the leaderboard. This is Tom from Rogue One Canine. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.